How's it going guys? My name is Eric Van, likes to play in squishy gooey stuff, and welcome back to Corpse Party Blood Drive. In the last episode, stuff happened, man. Yeah, dude, it was like crazy, it was like stuff. So check it out. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna continue here. There's a Yoshikazu wannabe, the, actually it was the anatomical model is after us. And he was all running around doing some crazy stuff. Maybe I should go back to the bathroom actually, because we were in there. Might be something in there for us. I gotta explore more. There's a whole school to explore now. I'm gonna get lost in this chapter. This chapter seems like one of those chapters where you gotta run around and kinda like know what you're doing. And it's scary because it's, uh, I don't know. It's just gonna be a lot of wandering. I've done this before in Book of Shadows and the other corpse party where I just end up wandering around for like, oh God, oh hey, there's a blue spirit in here. That's cool. But maybe I shouldn't go in there. Because there were some evil blue spirits we've seen in this game that were kind of nasty. Hey, you. Oh, it's so hungry, so hungry. What? I'm afraid I don't have any food on me. That's Ayumi. <laughs> what? We got to get some food? Oh, puzzles are crazy. Okay, we got to get some food. Food? We don't have anything? Yoshiki, you didn't bring any snacks? I thought you were going to come well prepared. <laughs> oh, God. Where am I gonna get food? Okay, I guess we just gotta wander into random classrooms. Let's find some food. Delicious. Does anyone have some fried chicken? Some chicken wings? Bok, bok, bok. I want chicken wings. Oh God, why? I was walking. Oh, there's a phantom. This sucks, what is this? Oh no, I walked in here for a bandage. This is, is there anything else? No, there isn't, get out. The door is stuck, the door is stuck. That's bad. Oh God, stop slapping me and making blood spray out of me. That's not good. Oh, oh, that wasn't worth it. That wasn't worth it one little bit. I just got like a scrap of bandage, yet I got bitch slapped by a phantom. Oh no, the f you're, oh God, the phantoms chase you everywhere now. Oh, this sucks, go to the science room. Maybe it won't come into the science room. Phantoms, stay out of there. I hate the phantoms. They come everywhere. You can't just like, Oh, God, no! Oh, God, no! Stop slapping me around! Oh, that fell down, too! This is the worst day of my life! Oh, God, there's just nothing here. There's just a corpse. Uh, Naoya Hatano bled from suffering and trauma and shit. Oh, you're tired? Okay, Ayumi, you're just gonna die. Look it, you're so tired, you're just sitting there. You're just getting your ass kicked! Okay, is there, is there a... There's a single jar in the cabinet filled to the brim with formaldehyde and containing numerous human eyeballs. Use it! Throw the eyeball at the phantom! Oh, uh, Ayumi, you're g let's see what happens when you get game over. I'm just gonna reload my save, fuck it. Yeah, get your ass kicked! Yeah! Oh, yeah! Yeah, that's right, kiss the ground. That's all you get, you just get like a splatter noise. Game over! Uh, you don't get wrong endings for dying to the normal phantoms. Oh, hey, I got a trophy for dying. So don't you just love trophies like that or achievements in the game? Like, congratulations, you died a stupid death. You get a trophy. It's like, why? Why would you put a trophy for dying? It doesn't make sense. You're not supposed to be proud of that. Okay, whatever. I'm over it. Let's let's find some chicken. Die, 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 die. Hey, die. Ooh, oh, God, don't fall into the hole there. That's bad. Large quantities of long black hair stuffed into the cabinet. In the very back, there seems to be a very small bony object. What? Oh. Let's match. Burn it. I use... Oh, gee! Oh, no! Was Aiko in there? <laughs> hey, at least I found something. The hair immediately catches fire and burns up in one giant, rather foul-smelling fireball. I got a bird corpse! That's good. What, what am I... That doesn't sound like food. What am I supposed to do with a bird corpse? Ghost, are you, are you, maybe the ghost is like really disgusting and it'll just eat the bird. Eat the bird, ghost, please. <laughs> oh, well I did want chicken. It's kinda close to it, wouldn't you think? Door is affixed to the wall, that's great. Where am I supposed to go? I got a dead bird. Anyone want a dead bird? Some to it. Who wants it? Oh, hey, who are you? Where? He's not here, but where? What? Take a bird corpse. You're gonna like it. 
that's that's really that's it ah, it's cheapers oh wow you the spirit had their burden with them or something thank you cheapers and i used to eat this together every day please take some as a sign micro food oh yeah it's, oh i'm so lucky strawberry milk bun oh i am so lucky too bad we got to give it to the ghost i'd really like to eat the strawberry milk bun we're probably like starving in here and there's even another shiny object oh that's great batteries yay that means i can have my phone out for longer i can see all these trip wires yay is there anything else in here for a moment it really looked like something was moving man well let's get out of here then i don't like the sound of that I'm a good singer. Pretty damn good. Okay. Cool. Boys' bathroom. Oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. I'm in the boys' bathroom. But I guess Yoshiki's with us. Oh, hey, how, we can change characters, can't we? That turns off the light. Is it L1 that changes characters? Is it R2? Yeah! Oh, hell yeah, I'm Yoshiki. There we go. What, what was I doing playing as Ayumi? So hungry. We got dessert for you, buddy. Come to think of it, I do have that strawberry milk bun. Let's give it! Yeah, give the milk bun, of course. Here you go. Thank you. Now I don't have to search. That's your spirit. He's gonna like... Put Spirit's gonna put it into its body, so it's gonna boogle blip, and it's gonna fall into the toilet! Oh well, whatever. At least you're appeased now. The spirit left something behind. Music room key! That's in the other hall, the other building though. Guess we gotta go to the other wing. Gotta go to the second wing. Okay, let's get out of here. First wing, I've had enough of your biz. We're going to the second wing. Oh, tentacle! Oh no! Oh my god, Yoshiki tentacle hentai confirmed! Oh god, stop it! I'm trying to get out of here, it's, oh, please! Holy shit. Yoshiki likes that way too much. Look at the look on his face. <laughs> Glad I came to Heavenly Host. Oh god, there's a phantom! Oh shit! Oh god, watch out for the obstacles! That's the hardest thing about running away, is not the actual phantom themselves. Then again, I did get bitch slapped with Ayumi earlier. But it's the obstacles, the tentacles. Uh, yeah, phantom, get out. I know you're angry because you're dead, and I'm alive. I know, that sucks. Life's unfair. Death's unfair. <laughs> I know. We know this. Calm down. Oh god, it's right here! This is the entrance What do I do? Oh. Looks like I'm gonna have to do some lifting here if we want to get over to the other build. Oh, wow. Well, that's an easy solution. Usually in games like that, it's like, Oh no, there's a desk blocking my way! I can't go over there for some reason. Alright, we can get through now. Haha, <laughs> Phantom, you stupid poopy head! I'm going to the other wing. You better not follow me. I'll be a little chapped if you can follow me to the other wing. Oh, you're still following cutscene, at least. These phantoms are ridiculous. Are you sure about that? Oh yeah, there was one outside, for sure, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's handy. Misito's got to be up to no good. There's a dusty old towel. Yeah, there was. I don't want to play as Zayimbi. I want to play as Yoshiki. I want to play as Yoshiki. Yoshiki is my bro. Ooh, that rain sound is so loud. I can't hear, like, anything. The sound is really unbalanced in this game. That made me want to pee. Yeah, whatever, she she might have her flesh burned off, but she's still beautiful on the inside, okay? It's probably just fake fire anyways, just a trick. Oh, that ghost is still here. There's an unsettling large amount of sapphire what? Okay, hey, let's get a name tag. Minota Agricultural Class 1 to Yuchiro Yurata! Fell out window while running from Black Shadow. Oh, that sucks. Too bad for you. Okay, so where is this pillar, Labiller? Anywhere? Um. Oh, is this it? It's gotta be it. 
Yeah, that's... My thought's exactly Yoshiki. But it could take any form. What? Oh, that's... Yeah, that's C, Ayumi. You gotta... You gotta have a little caution. Then again, that's that took that took some balls, okay, I mean I agree that Well Yoshiki, we gotta we gotta do something. I don't think we're gonna find anything in the statues, but no, Yoshiki's gotta do it. He's got longer arms. I reached as far in as I could. My whole left arm was now inside the statue. Kishinum was clearly feeling uneasy about this, but it, oh, the, the statue moved, oh my god. But he had every right to, especially given what he'd just seen from the statue that I had completely missed. Stop, Ayumi, let her keep digging. Stop her! Yeah, it just moved, yes. Uh-oh. Okay, he saved her. Oh, that was gonna lop off her arm. Holy shit. I looked back at the statue and sure enough, the wolf's mouth was now firmly closed, its eyes glaring menacingly at me. Ayumi, that's why you don't go in blind. Yes. I'm glad Yoshiki's here. Hey, you got it. That's cool. Aw, oh, you know what? She got the crystal. I really should have let her arm get got bitten off because it probably would have been a wrong ending. <laughs> that would have been a really good wrong ending, too. We stared at the pillar's crystal for some time studying it. For us, it represented a rare success in this school where abject failure was the norm. Oh, Ayumi, like, the first time you're right about something this whole game, you're like, hey, I'm right! That's, no, you can't just do that. <laughs> you can't! There you go. Justice obtained! That's good. We got got ourselves some justice. Because I managed to get the crystal with my arm intact, the danger I'd barely escaped didn't feel quite as real. I could only regard this as a victory and was reveling. Of course you were, because it's your first victory you've had in a while. But then again, if it is the first victory I would have had in a while, I would have been happy as well. Kishinum was still sour for a bit, but he quickly warmed up to the situation and let out a small laugh. Or maybe the night air had just gotten to him. No, he cares about you so much. Oh, hey, there's another shiny object. Even better. What's this? A key. I wonder what this key is to. Hmm, there's something written on it. Pool, oh, the pump, good old pool pump room. Pump room key obtained. Yoshiki has saved you from one there. Okay, is this spirit coming for me? I can hear it still going, Bleh. Ah. Bleh. Okay, let's go to the music room. I got the music room key. That's our next destination. <laughs> It's not raining that heavily, come on. Yay! Whatever, just just shake it out. Wow. Maybe it's a spiritual towel. <laughs> Yoshiki, man, he's perving out. Mm, yeah. He's like, I'd wipe you down. Oh, God, here's the spirit just appearing out of thin air. You're horrible. <laughs> oh, my God. Jeez, stop following me. I don't have any like of those banishing things. Better save my game. Oh, these phantoms are so annoying. They chase you everywhere. I can't explore at my own leisure anymore. It's like impossible to do. Okay, um, Yoshiki, I'm changing to you because I like you. Oh god, the tr oh, see, I gotta be wary of that shit while I escape. Okay, the music room's on the first floor, right? This is it? Yeah, this is the music room. 
All right. What's going to be in here for me? Uh, trip wires and the phantom still chasing me. This is this isn't good. Okay, good. The wire the skeleton. The mage's guild grunt. <laughs> Yasuhiku no mura pee. Most likely succumb to fatigue. Last words were, I'll work till I die. Wow, that's, that's intense. Okay, the phantom! I'm trying to explore! Stop bitch slapping me! Stop it! Oh, shit. Oh, the door's stuck. Oh, my you fucking... I'm stuck. Oh my god. Yoshiki, you're just gonna get your ass kicked until you die. Can I change characters and run away? Yeah, I can. Oh my god. Oh no, what? I just got away from the other spirit. Please don't make... Oh, that's good. We can find another pillar. Good. Nice. Okay. Where... Oh, you... What? They're attending completely wrapped around the door without some means of cutting them. There's no way in. I don't have anything. Let's use justice on it. The alcohol lamp. There's no more matches, really? I have nothing to use. Alcohol lamp. That's not going to do a thing here. Okay, we need to cut it. Oh, no! No, 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 phantom! I just friggin' got away from your friend. Okay, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Open sesame! Okay, I'm gonna work from the top down here. There's gotta be something in here. Yes! Oh, hell- Oh, no, this is just for- For getting rid of my darkening. I don't need dark- Oh, no! I need one of those, like, banishing papers. Oh, shit! Heavenly host, current list of teachers. It's blacked out. Crawl through, please! Yeah, good. Thank you for stopping there, Phantom. Very How'd you get here?! How'd you get here?! Oh, my god! A name tag rests beside the corpse. Mizo Naka is stuck with a blunt object from behind. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is there nothing here? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Get out. Get out. Okay, I'm gonna have to cure my darkening somehow, but I don't think it's my dark- I- Oh my- This game. Game, I hate you so much. You have no idea. Every fiber of my being, I hate you so much. Okay, good. Is there anything? There's something in the cap. Finally, I got a freaking talisman! Eat shit! Oh, yeah! Fuck yeah! Oh my god, I have no idea how much that helps. Okay, my darkening is cured. Oh, that's... The darkening and health is different, obviously. Uh, well, hey, you know what? Ayumi's health is low, let's just switch to Yoshiki. Oh, there it goes. The phantoms are the worst. They follow you everywhere. <laughs> they should only follow you, like, maybe two areas away. Instead, they follow you to the end of time. If you don't have a banishing slip, you're done. And they're hidden away. That wasn't even a shiny object. It was, like, on a shelf. I, I, maybe I should explore more. I should get some more banishing slips. There's bound to be more kicking around. But the, the door is affixed, but right around here, the, oh, maybe it's in this room with the tentacles, but how, I gotta find a way to cut them, I guess. This is nowhere is safe. Thanks, Tips. That's good. Your commentary is great. Okay, good. We cut that. What's in here? The locker is shut with an axe. Take the axe or leave it be. Take the axe. Why not? Yay! Oh, God! No! Not another one! I hate your guts, Phantom! I hate your freaking guts! You're the worst! Banishing slip. Bandages! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, God. Oh, God. Can I move those tables? No. I gotta run all the way around to the other side if I want to get there. Oh, this sucks. Oh, jeez, la bomb de bees. Okay, use the axe. Yeah, here we go, baby. I just want to see Yoshiki's hunking muscles use this axe. Oh, yeah, you're a lumberjack. Mmm. Or I guess a tentacle jack. <laughs> the visible ends with of each tentacle are slays off completely and what's left of them immediately withdraws into the room, freeing the door open to me. Okay, good. Progression, baby. That's nice. I like progressing. I hate it when I run into a dead end. Oh my god, I don't want to be in here! What's gonna happen? I don't like this place. <laughs> Black magic. That's what we gotta get out. There was an enormous jet black tree sprouting from the middle of the classroom. Well, that's one of the pillars, obviously. Ooh, thanks, Tips. 
以前の天神小学校とは概念自体が違うと認識すべきうん、カシなんつーか。カシナンツーか。カシナンツーか。カシナンツーか。カシナンツーか。カシナンツーか。カシナンツーか。カシナンツーか。カシナンツーか。カシナンツーか。カシナンツーか。カシナンツーか。カシナンツーか。カシナンツーか。カシナンツーか。カシナン There's a bunch of paintings, but I can't examine them. What does it say here? It says kanji. Kanji that I can't read. Okay, fuck it. I, let's just go into this hobbit hole. Uh oh. At the base of the tree, among all the spirit roots, there was a wooden plate displaying words written in what looked more like red paint than blood. No. <laughs> I I don't want to deal with you guys, phantoms. You guys are mean. You were humans once. Respect the living, phantoms. Jealous much? <laughs> Jealous of the alive. You guys are so petty. The murmurings of vengeful spirits could be heard all around us, and mixed in with them was a dull tone that resonated through my body like a ringing in my ears. Yeah. Kishinuma must have heard it too, based on his reaction, all the color had drained from his face. Like a record ne player needle skipping, the faint, unpleasant tone continued to repeat over and over, echoing within us. I felt like if I stayed any longer than I had to, my head would burst. I was hyperventilating! We're in the art room. Yeah, I... Do we really need to say that? Both of us were trembling and even Kishinuma's breathing had become erratic. The trepidation that rocked us down to our cores was something that couldn't ever truly be described. If you haven't felt it, and I pray you haven't, you'd never understand. Okay. So you're saying I can't understand. Part of it, most of it, probably was due to the fact that we were literally standing in a place that operated on its own logic. Nothing we'd ever learned or experienced applied. I focused my attention back onto the wooden plate by the roots. There was a charm hanging from it fashioned out of a wooden plank bound with thin rope. The rope was looped over its surface into a perfectly patterned mesh, giving it a texture that looked much like a bird's feather or a bee's nest at first glance. What is that? I can see the but... Okay. My breaths were coming in short, choppy bursts at this point, but I had to keep working toward my goal. I clenched the charm in my hand, biting my lip and preparing for the worst. Uh oh. Well, that's not good. Look at what you've done. You've unleashed them all. But I guess we gotta face our fears. Okay, whoa, 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 there's nowhere to run. これがこの柱の結晶かしら。綺麗。手に持っていると何か暖かい水が流れ込んでくるみたいな感覚。マジかよ。Honor obtained. Hey, I got that was pretty easy. All I had to do was inspect here. Nothing really happened. Although maybe I could have run and if I ran, maybe something bad would have happened to me. There's something in the hole. I got the gym key. Thank God I looked twice. I thought there was a shining light in there. I was like, eh, I thought I saw one. Okay, so I got a gym key. Where, where's the gym? I didn't ever think there was a gym here. I know the pump room key. I know where to use that, but the gym? The gym. Where's the gym? Hey, save my game. We're making good progress now. Bum, 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 bum. Oh no, it's a phantom. No, no. That's good, but the, the phantom. Phantom, you're a poop head. Oh, it's probably this door. Is this the door to the gym then? I'm ready. Let's go. This door was a little suspicious. 
Wow, I didn't know there was, there was a gym here. Unless I'm mistaken, I didn't think there was a gym here. But it's new. I guess it's a new dimension, right? What's that thing in the middle? Where? Yeah, that's right. It's new. It wasn't a gym here. What is it? Wow. Looks like a giant turd. <laughs> yeah, it, Yoshiki, say it! What? It looks like a white piece of poo, Ayumi! Soft cream? Soft serve ice cream. <laughs> oh, that's an innocent thing to say. Oh my god. Ayumi, you gotta forgive him, okay? He wasn't. If I was there, I would have said something gross. <laughs> Oh, Yoshiki, you're such a nice guy. And I'm bad. Okay, give me my gem. Or whatever it is you're gonna give me. It's up there, yep. Kishinuma, Yoshiki's gonna stare at your panties. There's gonna be some kind of catch to it. You're screwed. Something bad's gonna happen. Huh. I wasn't sure I liked this idea, and my expression made those misgivings blatantly clear to Kishinuma. Yeah, come on, teamwork, okay? There's no room for modesty. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow, wow, I can control it. That's cool. Okay, let's run up the giant piece of uh, ice cream. Definitely not poo. Oh, we're getting a little tired here. Oh, come on. Okay, there, that should be good enough. <laughs> poo monster's gonna attack you, though. Yes. <laughs> Guys, there's always gonna be a catch. What's gonna happen? Kishinuma looked up at me, but quickly diverted his eyes when he realized he could easily see up my skirt. There's no room for modesty, please! Just something's gonna happen, and you gotta be watching. Oh, see, I knew it. I let a loud tree grabbing Kishinuma's attention. Not that it mattered, given our relative positions. Oh my god! Oh no, that's creepy! Jump! Jump, you're not that high. Actually, that is pretty high. Ooh, there's people trapped in here. That's crazy. All of a sudden, I was surrounded by body parts with hands and strands of hair comprising the bulk of... Ooh, that's that's really creepy. And then, from out of the blue, sickeningly cheerful carnival music began blaring from over the gym's loudspeakers. Volume up so high as to unpleasantly distort the sound. Hey! It was almost like an old record player from a phonograph. Coupled with corpses now littering my path, the music was even more unsettling than it would have been to begin with. It actually made it kind of seem it's like light up. Oh my god, I'm getting sucked in! That's you're gonna be one of those arms! Gotta get out! Oh shit! I was feeling losing my footing as the formerly solid pillar began to break down into a porous, almost sand-like substance. We got oh my god, I gotta get away from this. Ah! Ah! You don't get sucked into the Oh my god, you're getting sucked in! But I gotta be careful of my stamina! Oh god, my stamina! Shit! Oh, this isn't good! Oh, your stamina sucks so bad! You have no idea! Oh god, it's crazy! <gasps> ah!
Sand began to pour into my mouth and nose, immediately preventing me from saying another word or, more importantly, breathing. The more I tried to resist, the more the pillar pulled me in. The sand was now in my eyes and felt like it was seeping into my skull from there. The pain was absolutely unbearable. The weight of the material pushing against me quickly began cracking my ribs and collapsing my lungs. There was no escape anymore. I was already gone. Blah. Blah. High fives. Okay, I got it this time. I made sure I wasn't running too much before. Run, run, hurry up. Okay, I'm just running a little, I'm not getting tired. This is good. Oh, this is good. I'm just running a little bit. Bits here and there. Come on, slow and steady wins the race, but not that slow. You're getting sucked in. You're getting sucked in again. Hurry up, hurry up. Go. Oh, I got it. Oh God, thank God. Oh. Jump. Kishima grabbed on my arm and tried to pull me from the oh. That is so stressful. But within its depths, there was a little girl with black eyes and she was staring right at us. I wonder who... Sachi! Oh my god, the sight was unnerving. But he didn't flinch for long and he continued pulling, desperately trying to free me from becoming part of this pillar's makeup. That got the heart of beaten. Holy crap. What is Oi! Wow. Too intense. For oh, hey, no, get out. Does that really control you? Well, you gotta run out. Come on. Good idea. Yeah, let's get out of here. That's the white poo's last stitch effort. <laughs> but it failed, white poo. <laughs> you failed. Goodbye, White Poo. Goodbye, White Poo. You are so bad. I'm so good at rhyming, huh? Oh, I got Victor. I got three of these. That is awesome. Is oh no, the Phantoms are Phantom. I hate you. Oh hey, cutscene. Kisagi Academy, class 2-9, just prior to morning homeroom. I entered the classroom, school bag in hand, and beeline directly for Naomi. From the look of her on her face, she'd been waiting for me. Oh, hey, pirate. What? Naomi shook her head. When they said Shinozaki estate, I thought they meant, like, actually the estate of uh, Sachiko. Like, she went back there or something. Her voice quivered. No doubt memories of her time in Heavenly Host were resurfacing for her, just as they had been for me. And my news was no better, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh oh. You gotta make some new friends that aren't attached to Heavenly Hosts. Problem solved. Naomi had her face completely buried in her hands at this point. It shouldn't. What are you guys going to do about it? Well, Yumi's always getting herself into some mess. In my worry, I did what I often do when trying to clear my mind and looked out the window, staring into the cloudy sky. And suddenly there it was again. What? Oh, the moon. There was a solid black spherical object hovering in the sky. Well, more is at stake now. It's not just your friends in another dimension. The worlds are colliding. <laughs> what? Don't look outside the window. Come on, teach. Our homeroom teacher, Mr. Yamazaki, entered the classroom with his usual air of authority. Oh, Kuan, was she embarrassed that I didn't eat her chewed up food? Just the crazy moon. No, only people attached to uh, Heavenly Host, I bet. Oh, never mind. <laughs> if even the teacher was startled by this, it must be juicy. It must be juicy. <laughs> mm, like Tropicana. Or so all the other students seemed to think as they began to murmur noisily and get up to see for themselves. Ooh. 
Uh, yeah, class is canceled. The big one. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> wow. Priorities. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Naomi and I looked on another in the looked one another in the eye. We were both thinking the same thing. Okay, we we got to do something about it. Satoshi, don your superhero cape and let's do it. After class has ended, we took a trip to Polonia. I always say that wrong. Polonia Academy High School. We needed something to go on, some kind of clue, anything at all, really, so we just started asking around. Eventually, we encountered a girl who was crying profusely about some friends of hers who'd gone missing. Uh-oh. The entire time Mio spoke with us, she was trying to rub the tears from her eyes, and each time she attempted it, it made her ponytail twitch. <laughs> Sorry, when people are scared in this game, I, I like it. We'd pledged after our escape not to burden others unnecessarily with information about Heavenly Hosts, feeling that most people were simply better off not knowing. <laughs> Oh, something definitely scary is going on. That, that foreboding music speaks everything you need to know. Don't worry, we're going in. She was actually grabbing my shirt now and the tears were pouring from her eyes all over again. I agree with you, Mio. Aiko Niwa, the girl we'd met at Makina Shinozaki's apartment. She'd seemed calm and confident, even a little full of herself, but somewhere deep down, I'd felt there was a chink in her armor, and I think Naomi had felt it too. Definitely. Mio rubbed her eyes again, her ponytail perking up once more, and looked up at us with big wet saucers. Out of options, we elected to retry the Sachiko in the Ever After ritual. That was our method of ingress into Heavenly Hills last time, after all. With Proxy Doll in hand and my bag of supplies at the ready, the two of us yanked our arms back as hard as we could, splitting the paper in two so that we each held a piece. <laughs> it's because it's not about Sachiko anymore. Well, there is still Sachiko, but she's nice. <laughs> Whatever. I patted my bag as if demonstrating to Naomi how much was in it. It should have been fairly obvious, though, as the bag itself was practically bursting at the seams. Helicopters flew by overhead, no doubt in response to the mysterious black orb that had appeared in our sky. We watched the flurry of activity above us as we glumly left Paulonia Academy High School, no closer to any answers than we were before. Glancing over at Naomi, I saw the sour expression on her face and tried to imagine why she didn't want to go back home, and it wasn't hard to think of numerous reasons. <laughs> Yeah, so you've introduced her to the family. They have high expectations. Her expression instantly measurably brightened. We shifted direction slightly and began the relatively short foot trek to my house. It was an ordinary and rather pleasant walk for a while until Naomi caught sight of her mother turning the corner up ahead. At the time, I didn't realize that's who it was. She was clasping the arm of a young man sporting a shaved head and a construction outfit with some sort of insignia emblazoned on the back of his uniform. She was clearly very close to this man, cuddling up to him as they walked, pulling his arm into her balsam and even sneaking a few kisses before the pair disappeared down an alleyway. Oh, that's not good. I wonder if the insignia was the one from the, um, the one that Misuto has. Her voice had gone up a full octave as she said this. Clearly something was indeed bothering her, but I had no way to know what it was in that moment, and could only take her at her word. 
and her word was by all appearances that everything was fine, she'd more or less closed herself off, outwardly pretending not to have seen a thing. Ooh. The plot thickens. What's up with her mom? Her mom's darkening or something. As we drew closer to my house, we slowly began to see a strange light illuminating the area around it. And that area was different than what it had looked like this morning, to say the least. There was now a bamboo wall surrounding my home, and most notably, we now had a Audit? hot spring. <laughs> what words are there for situations like this? Flummoxed, maybe? Uh, well, we know where Kuan is. Oh god, oh no. Oh no. Immediately upon opening my front door, however, we were greeted by a sign reading, This way to the natural springs. Okay. We entered the dressing room only to find Yuka naked. Oh wow. That's. Don't look, guys. She's young. Don't look. Yuka! You was holding a toy goldfish, a towel, and a small beach ball in her hands. It's not the question I should have asked, but I was in too much shock for my words to come out the way I meant them to. And Yuka didn't seem to mind, she just smiled back at me as joyful as I'd ever seen her. Grabbing one of each of our hands, she slid open the glass door in the back and led us into the Mochita Springs proper that we'd just been hearing so much about. Yo, wow, yeah. you're naked. No, yeah, that's good. Wow, okay. There was another girl already soaking in the springs, a young girl around Yuka's age sporting a stylish hairdo. Satsuki, Mizuhara, hi. Wow, Satsuki! You'd be turned on by the raisins of mine, boingy boingy, oh my god, oh my god, what is go what is happening? Corp- Stop jiggling. Corpse party, what have you done? It was official, nothing made any sense anymore. Corpse party, what? Naomi had grabbed hold of my shoulders as if to keep me upright in case I'd suddenly decide to faint, which all things considered was probably a sensible precaution. Of course you're here, Kuan. <laughs> Yay, let's war that's cool. Let's just hang out in this hot spring for the remainder of our lives. <laughs> I pointed my finger at her in an accustom customary manner. Accusatory manner, I can read, as was the style of the time. <laughs> Suddenly, I found myself shuddering down to my core as my mom appeared before us wearing nothing but a bath towel. Her skin was bright pink and she seemed to be in very high spirits. By the looks of things, she was in the spring herself until just moments before we arrived, when she'd evidently stepped out of the kitchen to get a very large number of beverages. <laughs> Yuka and Satsuki were also in very high spirits. As was Miss Kuan. Cool! Naked party with Satoshi's family! Yay! Cheeses. Cheeses. Oh, wow. Naomi and I were forced into the frame as well, like it or not. We were now a party to this madness. Our eyes were basically pinpricks at this point. None of this seemed even remotely real, and neither Naomi nor I had any idea how to react to it. I do. Fan service, baby! Oh, yeah! I took the drink my mom handed to me, and without even checking what it was, I chugged down a few gulps. I was thirstier than I thought, apparently. There was a white, thick liquid inside the milk bottle I was given. It had a faint tint to it when viewed under the right light, but like the flavor, I couldn't quite identify it. I turned the bottle to read the label. Apparently, it was Niwa flavored. Don't tell me it is what I think it is. No, no, please. 
この度はこんなに素敵な温泉を作っていただきもういつでも入りに来てくださいね<笑>これうちの鍵ですあらありがとうございますあ母さんでも本当にいいんですか It's not、okay. 持ち田の湯を作ってくださったのは先生なんですから年間フリーパスですわ母さん God, you really don't like your teacher, Satoshi. That's. If my teacher was coming on to me and she was Kuan, because Kuan's awesome, and I was like an 18 year old high school student, I wouldn't have minded. I found myself tossing and turning, and then again, Satoshi does love Naomi. Love wins out over all. I just couldn't get to sleep for the life of me, so I tossed the covers aside and got up. This had to be the craziest day I could recall in this world, anyway. You've been to Heavenly Host and this is the craziest day? Come on. After all the commotion had died down and our many guests had departed, Dad had come home and predictably was in the hot springs right away with a carafe of his favorite sake. I had a hard time justifying Miss Kuan's arbitrary actions, not to mention my family's utter willingness to accept them, but in the end, I had to admit the hot spring was pretty nice. The rest of my family was all still sleeping, so the house was dead silent. I took off my clothes in the dressing room and slid open the glass door, and there, sitting on the edge of the spring, completely uncovered, was Miss Kuan. Of course! Hi, Kuan. My face instantly turned bright red. She was a fairly attractive woman, after all, so being alone with her felt like this was kind of exciting. Although looking at her now entirely exposed as she was revealed to me, that the shapely woman wasn't quite as shapely as I'd assumed. Her body was abnormally, worryingly thin. She was the definition of gaunt, looking every bit the part of an infirmed elderly woman from the neck down, and I could have sworn I caught a slight glint from the corner of her eyes. She didn't seem to notice me, so I was half tempted to slide the door closed, pretend none of this had ever happened, but no, I had to come clean. Despite the fact that I was much younger, man, and her student no less, she made absolutely no effort to hide her nakedness. In fact, she actually seemed a little excited to be seen this way. I don't believe that. I was legitimately relieved, but I was also having trouble concentrating on the conversation. It took every ounce of focus I had to avert my eyes from the things I knew I shouldn't be staring at. <laughs> What is her story? Why is her body like that? She immediately got up from her spot and dunked herself in the water up to her neck. Due to its mineral content, this was very effective means of at least partially obscuring her body. I panicked at the realization that I too was completely naked right now. I covered myself with my hands and could feel the blood rushing to my face, turning me what I was quite certain must have been an incredible shade of red. Recovering as best as I could from that embarrassment, I stepped into the water, choosing my spot carefully so as to put some distance between myself and Kuan. Hmm. <laughs> She knows something about what's going on. Both would be nice, I thought. Okay. Okay. <laughs> CEO and then teacher. Okay. okay, good. It didn't go. This game didn't go crazy like that. <laughs> 
Are you sure it tastes good? これで悩みも解決でしょ先生の考え方ってリニカのってて正しいのかもしれないけど発想が前のみりすぎだ。I scratched my head. ああ、いや。カレーのことを思い出してました。カレー? She seemed genuinely confused. I guess I heard the idea of feeding me pre-chewed curry was just another stroke of brilliance, maybe. Not at all something that might keep a poor high school boy like myself up at night. I really wanted to know, but couldn't bring myself to ask something so rude of a lady, even if I'm sure she wouldn't have minded. The more I thought about it, though, the more intrigued I was by this enigma. I began shiftily turning my gaze toward her in short intervals, examining her body for clues. Her face had the texture and hue of a woman in her early 20s. But her body was another story. All of her skin was as smooth and beautifully toned as that of her face, but there was so little behind it, ribs fully exposed in every detail. Even down toward her abdomen, I could make out round indentations where her internal organs were practically jutting out. There was no muscle, no fat, just skin and bones, literally. Her proportions just didn't match up with one another. She was like a construct built out of spare parts. It felt almost as if this person soaking before me weren't even entirely human. So may Heavenly Host might have, like, patched her together or something. That's crazy. <laughs> Miss Kwan suddenly let out a mischievous giggle. Crap, did she catch me staring? <laughs> That's because it was probably like the first day of your life. My memory was obviously a lot different from hers. Kuan Niwa wasn't even a part of it. The TA who showed up that day in my mind wasn't always would be Yui Shishido. I could still vividly remember her tri tripping on the step up to the teacher's desk and tearing her skirt. She had to hold the rear of it together with a safety pin for the entire day. And even though we were now living in a different reality, a world without Miss Yui Shinohara, Suzumoto, or Morishige, we had no memories of the alternate events from this existence. Oh wow, you're getting close. Ooh. You're in love with Satoshi, obviously. My mind went completely blank, my eyes were swimming in my head, and I couldn't even see straight from the heat of the water. I had to have misunderstood her. Miss Kuan's smiled oh miss kwan smiled widely and her cheeks turned a rosy red hue but only for a split second then she was back to looking wistful again pangs of undue guilt and dread began to well up inside of me i knew what the next word out of her mouth was going to be Ooh, she actually said it miss kwan was almost like a mass of innocence as she spoke that single word her eyes locked onto mine and froze them solid i couldn't look away <laughs> I was dumbfounded. I immediately and very quickly got out of the bath and headed for the dressing room. This was all just too, too weird. I looked back at Miss Kuan and unsurprisingly she seemed almost deflated. She was looking down at the water in a statue of utter dejection. I turned to face her, still feeling a strange mix of guilt and awkwardness, but allowing the guilt to dominate for a moment. After saying this, she closed her eyes and turned bright red, and I was pretty sure it wasn't from the heat. Despite her physique, she seemed like a schoolgirl in that moment. I began to waver in my convictions. I felt like I had to justify not returning her sentiment. She twitched a little at this. Had I gone too far? Was I supposed to know more about her in this reality than I actually did? After the longest few seconds in recent memory, her head drooped and a look of absolute sadness washed over her face. I'd never seen her like this before. I didn't mean to hurt her. She had to have known that. But what she didn't know, and what I couldn't really explain, was that I'd only been a part of this reality for a very, very short time now, so I genuinely didn't know anything about her. I tried to think of a way to convey this to her, but my mind kept drawing blanks. It was all just too absurd, too fantastical, too implausible. She slowly turned her back to me. Part of me was relieved by her acceptance, I guess? But another part of me was still absolutely riddled with guilt. There was a moment of silence and then Miss Kuan's white waterproof wristwatch broke it with a sudden loud beep. All the sadness in her expression gave way to surprise as the numbers on the watch's display, which I realize now, hadn't changed this whole time, began counting down. I felt almost as if I'd been saved by the bell, so to speak, and forced a small laugh hoping that this interruption might help move the topic away from me. She smiled. She's probably researching herself. She knows something's going on. 
There was something about the smile of hers that was strangely haunting. It would come to leave a lasting impression on me. Thank you for healing my friend's wounds in this strange new world, is what I was trying to convey, and somewhere deep down I think the sentiment got through. Oh, she's back! Yeah. Everyone loves Satoshi, but he can never return the feelings. Satoshi in a nutshell. With that, she slowly and meticulously waded her way to the edge of the spring. At which point she stepped out of the water directly in front of me. <laughs> yeah, she is really thin. Holy shit. Constructed from parts in Heavenly Host. That's just crazy to think about. Because I was wondering how that worked. How can someone just replace them, you know? That's so weird. Okay, cool. We're playing as Ayumi again. I'm going to go to a save point. And I'm going to save it and we're going to end this episode. Okay, well, I got to a save point. I'm going to end the episode here. Um, this was an insanely long video. I have a feeling we're really close to the end of Chapter 4. So in the next episode, I might actually finish Chapter 4 and then play a little bit of Chapter 5. I'm not sure, though. Um, I thought I was going to play to the end of this chapter, to tell you the truth, because I was expecting it to be like other chapters, but this is way longer than I thought. So holy crap, I've been recording for a while. Well, I really hope you enjoyed. Remember to leave a like. Helps me out immensely. See you in the next one. And as always, guys, peace.